morning, everyone. Welcome to the breakfast at UM Health. Uh, this is a live webinar series, uh, episode number 22 for the year. Today, we have two speakers. One, one is Prof. Jeannie Wong from the Department of Biomedical Imaging. And the second speaker will be from the Department of Palliative Medicine with the topic intensive caring, everyone's business. So for the first speaker, Associate, Associate Prof. Jeannie uh, is an expert in medical physics with a particular emphasis on radiation dosimetry and radiation protection. Her research area focuses on the development and application of novel techniques for in vivo patient dose monitoring and radiation dose optimization. Radiation dosimetry in diagnostic imaging is often overlooked due to low dose levels and uncertainties. With the rise of advanced uh, imaging technologies uh, such as CT, PET, and there's increased procedures, and accurate dosimetry is uh, important and crucial for patient safety and monitoring. So please welcome uh, Prof. Ginny to share with us the topic on unveiling the unseen, the vitality of radiation dosimetry in diagnostic imaging. Uh, thank you, Dr. Weiling, for the kind introduction. Um, so, so today I'll be um, sharing with you about um, what is radiation dosimetry and and why we want to do, why, why we want to do it in diagnostic imaging. So as we are as many of you are aware and that radiation is used widely in medicine in our gen x-rays, our CTs, our treatment from diagnostic to treatment all the way through in nuclear medicine, in monitoring uh, patient response and etc. These are many sort of the uh, medical images that you may be familiar with. Um, and this is this one here is also a CT image of a, a COVID patient uh, lungs. So we today my talk will be focused primarily on ionizing radiation. Um, so although we have MRI, they are non-ionizing, so we will not be talking about that today. Sorry. Um, so while there are different types of um, radiation exam examination in uh, diagnostic imaging, the type of dose that incurs across the different type of examination and scans can be quite different. And here you can see that, uh, for example, CT is usually associated with a uh, 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 larger amount of dose compared to dental or chest x-rays or mammography. And another radiation um, examination that incurs high radiation dose is interventional radiology. So interventional radiology has now become quite a common uh, medical intervention practice for diagnosing various vascular and cardiac diseases. And in fact, there's more than 3.6 billion radiological uh, interventional procedures are performed worldwide. Um, it is one of the procedures that has incurs highest radiation dose in diagnostic in imaging and with the complexity of the, the increasing of the complexity of the IR procedures and techniques, the technology, there is an inadvertent increase in the radiation dose as well, both to the patient as well as to the staff. Just to illustrate how much of a difference across different type of radiation examination and uh, intervention, you can see here, like for intervention like embolization procedures, we we have uh, um, like higher dose, but they can have um, a, we can have low dose for some of the other procedures like um, venograms, uh, PTBD, etc. Another example of where uh, the high dose incur where we can measure the peak skin dose or the maximum skin dose to the patient, because this is because the X-ray tube is usually at the coming from the bottom, so you know the back of the patient receive a very, very high dose, and especially the interventional procedure, the cerebral, the cardiac procedures, they can go up to um, like uh, two or three gray, um, or tr here it's a uh, two three thousand milligram. And two or three gray is the dose magnitude that usually we use for tre treatment in radiotherapy for our patients that comes for everyday treatment. So why are we concerned about radiation? 
mainly the two biological effects that we're concerned is uh, divided into the stochastic or random effect as well. And the second one is the tissue reaction or sometimes we call deterministic effects. Now, what the stochastic effect is usually associated, um, it's usually um, a linear uh, relationship with increasing radiation dose. And it is the probability of increasing increasing uh, probability of radiation effects uh, as the radiation dose increase. And it usually doesn't have a threshold dose, meaning that we assume that whatever low dose there is, there is a probability of that causing uh, radiation effects. On the other hand, for deterministic effect, it is the severe it is usually associated with a threshold, meaning if you reach a certain threshold dose, you start to see the manifestation of these radiation effects in your patient. And usually the severity of the effects uh, increase with radiation dose. So at, we don't know really at what happens at the low dose region here. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, theories that uh, whether it should be a linear effect or quadratic, but at the moment, uh, the general consensus is still using the linear effects, uh, linear response. So what are the types of uh, tissue reaction and stochastic reaction? So tissue reaction or deterministic reaction are like example, skin burns, sterility, cataract, radiation sickness, or even death. So the higher the dose, the more the severe effect it is. For stochastic effect, they are usually, um, uh, they are related with cancer, uh, hereditary defects, mental retardation, and development of changes. So they are caused by cell transformation. The higher the dose, the higher the chance of this effect occurring. However, um, it means that you either have it or not have it. You may have radiation dose, but you may not have this because this is just uh, stochastic. Um, but if you do get any of the stochastic effect, the effect can be quite bad, like cancer, right? Um, another picture here showing the uh, radiation um, effects, the deterministic effects. Um, as the radiation dose increase, we see that there are, you start to see things like um, um, islands of pacification, bone marrow uh, related sickness, GI related sickness, nervous system. So, um, but below usually um, the radiation dose that's associated with and uh, diagnostic imaging are below 100 millisieverts and they are usually not known um, uh, radiation effects. Very few that will exceed higher than this, and a few, some of those are the one that can exceed this dose can are is the an, angiography or interventional radiology uh, procedures. These are some pictures showing the radiation induced tissue reaction. This the because due to long exposure of radiation exposure, increasing the tissue reaction. Patients. This is skin burn and necrosis subsequently. The patient has undergone several um, cardiac procedures um, like within a short time. And, and, and you can see this is a sequential event actually. So the tissue necrosis actually occurs much later, much later. So they don't manifest immediately after the procedure. So the other effect is cataract. So usually cataract is really uh, associated with older population, elderly population, but uh, for um, sometimes with neurointerventional procedures, the, there's a high radiation dose to the eye, so that can induce radiation-induced cataract for the younger population. The table here shows the different types of threshold dose to, for inducing different types of tissue reaction in skin and eye. So as you can see, um, about two gray or three gray, you start to see like uh, erythema, epilation, and et cetera. Note also that the time, on, time of onset of this event can be different. Uh, some are early, but um, higher dose, they may actually um, heal from the, the initial erythema, and then, but later manifest as, um, as a 
like a more serious condition. The eye lens dose is also here as well. Now, what does it, how about the operators or the, 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 the radiologist, the cardiologist that, that operates it? This paper here is actually uh, done in Malaysia, uh, Malaysia uh, in a Sarawak hospital. They survey uh, the, the radiation staff uh, to understand the risk of radiation-induced cataract for staff in interventional cardiology. And they found that there is a dose-dependent increase risk to the posterior lens opacity for the ca interventional cardiologists and nurses when um, the, the radiation protections are not being used properly. So realizing that, especially with eye lens uh, opacity, that the radiation, the threshold dose for radiation induced cataract formation is much lower than what we understand earlier. So the uh, International Commission on Radiological Protection, ICRP, in 2011, they have revised the threshold dose to 0.5 gray from previously two gray threshold. Following this, the, it also impact the, the, um, the operator dose. So previously, um, the, they also lower the annual equivalent dose limit for uh, operators from 150 millisieverts to 20 millisieverts a year. So it means that um, in Malaysia currently, we are not monitoring islands dose. But if we do monitor this, then there is a possibility that um, an a radiologist or cardiologist may not be uh, able to continue to perform their procedure um, if they are receiving a very high dose to the lens, to their lenses. And pregnant patient, and I'm sure this is a very uh, often case where you will encounter patients that needs to be scanned or have interventional procedure performed on them. And also we have a lot of um, um, accidental uh, scans. So you see this uh, picture here, mommy, please tell them I'm here in all our radiology uh, x-ray room so that uh, to warn our patient to sort of remind, to, to alert the staff if they are pregnant. But sometimes um, we still have uh, accidental uh, irradiation. So to scan or not to scan, that is the question for a clinician because as a clinician, you're often uh, you often need to advocate for both the, uh, the mother as well as the fetus or the baby, providing care for them. So just a quick uh, mention about the effects of antenatal exposure. Generally, the understanding is that as the post-conception time increased, the radiation uh, sensitivity of uh, the fetus also uh, decreases. So it is most uh, sensitive at the early stage, but uh, so in the first two weeks and because, but with that, it's either you, it will uh, automatically abort or not, but usually you need a lot, a very high dose to have this effect. Um, and we are also aware that with um, early uh, miscarriage, there's usually a lot of other reasons that are not related to radiation. So just the normal population will, will also have this uh, amount of uh, risk of uh, miscarriage. I always say that it's the, you know, because they had radiation and therefore they had, they had miscarriage. Uh, um, but as the um, um, post-conception time increase, so some, some, during the organogenesis period, the, if there are high radiation exposure at that point, there is a higher risk of congenital anomalies to the fetus. Yeah. As, and, as, and later on, there may be an increased risk of um, cancer, um, childhood cancer, etc. Another concern with uh, uh, those is pediatric dose. So we have a lot of pediatric patients, their tissues are more radiosensitive and they also have a longer lifetime. And those, those will have an increased lifetime attributed risk 
of radi secondary uh, radiation induced secondary cancer. So there is an initiative in the uh, global scene on image gently and image image gently for pediatric and image wisely for the adults to advocate for optimization of imaging procedures so that um, so that the patients are better uh, protected. So if imaging is only done once, usually the dose is very minimal. But if you have a patient that has to be imaged very, you know, two times a day or every day or, you know, every every few days, then that that amounts to quite a, a significant accumulated dose. However, this also definitely is balanced by the justification of the needs for the imaging to determine the best method to manage the patient. So now that we understand that our, um, the radiation effects and what can we do about it? Well, we can, um, so, we can actually measure them. So to do this, we call this radiation dosimetry. Um, it's a procedure where we determine the absorbed dose or any other um, um, exposure or radiation dose related quantities from due to ionizing radiation. And we use a device called a dosimeter and there are many, many different types of devices that we can use. Um, they are also, in terms of method, we can do it either directly or indirectly. Um, in direct methods, we usually record that the parameters that is output by the machine parameters. So that gives an indication of what type of dose that the patient has received. And we can also do measurement on phantoms. So phantoms are like dummies that are that has a, they, they're like human and we when we do exposure, then we measure on them, it, it's like a surrogate for human. We can also do some estimation using some uh, so computer software and apps, Monte Carlo simulation. And we can also do direct method, uh, which is the in vivo patient dosimetry, which I'll be talking a bit more later. So in indirect methods are, for example, are things that you after an examination, you can um, have a summary of the dose to the patient. For example, here we have the CT examination, which has CTTI and DLP. And then on here is for the angio, uh, angiography examination, we have other parameters. They are usually not accurate, uh, those men, not the most accurate dose monitoring me methods. It usually indicates the radiation output of the machine, not what the patient received. But it gives an idea of, you know, whether it's of how much the dose. Um, and it also have no information on specific in the location which of where and the dose will locate uh, radio sensitive organs. Um, nowadays we have very advanced softwares uh, that, is a, that is with our CT machine uh, which we can actually extract the dose. They have this dose tracking software. They are very useful to extract exposure and those parameters from imaging. Um, many commercial systems available. Um, however, they can be quite expensive and not, not all facility, not all medical hospitals will be able to afford this. Um, other dose estimation tools and softwares or are also be de developed most of it are in the uh, research uh, area. And for example, code here is a conceptus dose. It's usually used to look at, estimate the fetal dose due to um, uh, interventional procedures, CT, X-rays, and et cetera. Some of these uh, softwares are not very user-friendly, um, but nonetheless, they are there. So one thing that would be good if we don't have this now, but it, you know, something that I would like to uh, brought for discussion is that would it be good to have a patient dose registry so that we can at automatically record all patient radiation exposure doses um, across different modalities, different examination, and then we can track that dose for patient. Um, but we do, sorry, there's a typo there. We need a system for this. We need an infrastructure for this. Um, 
and currently there is no such system in Malaysia, um, but there are some of this in uh, European countries and where they also enforce regulation to record patient doses. Uh, in terms of direct methods, um, we can measure like things like the islands dose using special detectors and perform real-time dose monitoring. And this is one of our work where we actually uh, monitor some of our patient islands doses. And you can see that we do see that some of our patients are receiving uh, doses that exceeded the threshold dose for cataract formation. And using this type of uh, radiation detectors, we can also monitor what type of examination, what type of exposure, at what angle would that uh, we will, will result in the uh, dose to the islands. And what type of uh, techniques that we use would incur high radiation dose compared to the others. So that once we know this, there is a way that we can you know, uh, uh, optimize this. We can uh, change our technique to, to make it uh, to reduce the radiation dose to our patients. Other methods we have this um, also, this is a dichromic film, which is like a piece of like paper, but the radiation, once it's exposed to radiation, it can darken. So we, we use this to measure uh, radiation dose to, to the uh, back of the head of the patient. And we can see that there is a variety of the dose. And usually this is for a neural procedure where we see a high dose at the occipital region. Um, so, we know, so we know we can measure them. So what's next? Um, what can we do with this information? By knowing the skin dose and islands dose uh, procedure, during the procedures, during the procedures, we can actually um, you know, be aware of the, the dose that is uh, delivered and try to you know, optimize the procedure or uh, avoid therefore avoiding the deterministic effects or reduce their severity. After the procedure, if there is, if you're aware that the, the dose is very high, there is a possibility that you can actually follow up with a patient to, 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 know, to, to see if they have any of reporting of these effects and provide the appropriate management for that. Um, once we know the dose, we can actually optimize procedures and examination. We can set up diagnostic reference level to ensure that um, at least most of our patients will, um, will, will be using an optimized examination procedures. Um, we can help reduce patient dose to prevent overexposure. And when we reduce patient dose, we are also reducing operators' dose as well, those to our staff our nurses, our radiographers, our radiologists, cardiologists. For patients, we can also provide a better uh, management, uh, uh, provide counseling with informed decision, both for the clinician as well as patient. So I'll end with this slide that you don't know, if you don't know what you deliver, you don't know what you deliver if you do not measure it, and if you don't measure it, you cannot improve it. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Jeannie, for your very thorough lecture. Any questions from the floor? Uh, can you tell us what kind of uh, radiation uh, protection we, 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 we can uh, use? Uh, you mean for patient or for staff? For, for the patient? Yeah, um, well, for patient, usually uh, it will depend on the type of examination or the scans that they need. So if, say, if it is a, if it is an abdominal, if say it's a, pain, example, it's a pregnant patient and you force, you have to scan the abdominal region, then there is no, you can't put any protection in there because you need to know, you need to, to image the patient so that to provide the best uh, management for the patient. But for example, if the if you need to x-ray the chest, but if they are pregnant, you can actually collimate, like apply collimation so that you only uh, x-ray the region that you, in, you are interested and therefore protect the, uh, the fetus is well away from the, uh, as the primary beam and they only receive very little uh, radiation dose. Yes, yeah, so applying different types of uh, 
technique. So sometimes, um, sometimes I think um, the the protection of this patient, the protection for this patient, really depends on what they what the examination. And important thing is, is we need to make sure that we are getting the diagnostic scans done properly first. Does that answer? Yeah. yeah. Any questions from the floor? Um, I have a question with all these new like imaging modalities. Uh, do they have like a reduced dose uh, software with new imaging modalities? Yes. Yes. Um, and how much uh, radiation dose do they cut down? Uh, I guess it varies across different type of uh, modalities, but as we know. Um, artificial intelligence and all this uh, AI-based um, image processing has actually changed the landscape of um, imaging. It 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 changed how how you know we we can use less radiation dose actually, and we apply image processing and to to help us to have better images. So I've, I just had a chat with our radiographers yesterday that we, we had a new CT machine and apparently the CT, uh, the dose to the CT uh, that the CT delivers for some examination can be as far as half of the our older CT. So that's a, that's a pretty impressive, um, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's one question from Dr. Lam. Um, are there any mechanism in place to quantify total radiation exposure for patients? And uh, yeah. Yes. Um, they, they currently, currently, no. They have, there's no, um, in Malaysia, we don't have this mechanism in place. Um, like I said, in Europe, they, there are some countries which they actually implement the regulation that you need to for like every CT examination you have to report in in there say oh no this this much of those uh, has been delivered for this examination but in Malaysia we do not have this and there's no way for us to actually um, uh, integrate or accumulate all this examination from different uh, procedures and yeah so how can we do this you know there is there is ways but we may at the moment we may we may need to get um this uh, type of radiation tracking software some um from the commercial uh, vendors to to link with our uh, pet system and to to pull up data and then that is possible to integrate the dose for individual patient um but it's very expensive and because in malaysia it's not a it's not a regulatory compulsory thing. So um, a lot of time we don't get this. We we're not getting this so this um, tools. But otherwise, this can be a really, really useful tool as well. Hope that okay, yes. yeah. Thank you for your response. Uh, you can also, uh, also reply to, to the questions in the Q&A chat box. Okay, as we are running out of time, uh, thank you, Prof. Jeannie. I think uh, overall, we need to realize that radiation, uh, we don't really see radiation, but we, as clinicians, uh, we need to be aware about the, 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 the imaging request that we need, that we are ordering and try to limit, uh, as we need to care about patients dose. Okay, now we welcome Dr. David from the Department of Palliative Medicine to, to be the, to chair the next session. Thank you.